Okay, so here we go with some uh, ideas about differentiation and more importantly, implicit differentiation. And for implicit differentiation, we're going to go back to basics. Um, so when you see an expression such as x cubed, y to the 5, in fact, all these on the pages, um, usually they're not expressions on their own, but they're some kind of equations. And then when you differentiate some equations like a function, you get a derivative function or a gradient function. But look, we can find the derivative of just these simple terms, and then we can interpret what it means. Um, and then to find the derivative, let's think about the notation. So the notation is this, isn't it? I'm going to differentiate this expression with respect to the variable x. So we're going to do d by dx of x cubed, and that clearly is 3 x squared. This one will be d by dy of y to the 5, and that would be 5y to the 4. Okay? So we can differentiate each of these expressions with respect to the variable they're expressed in, which kind of makes sense. And this is what? d by dw of sine w. Sine w becomes cos of w. Okay? So that, that's the first step, the idea that we can differentiate I'll find the derivative of expressions, okay, and then start to piece these expressions together. So that's the first important step that we need to understand, okay, d by dx, or d by dy, or d by du of uh, the expression itself in terms of that variable. That's the first step. Second step is the chain rule. Now, the chain rule isn't usually written like this. d by dx of box <laughs> equals d by d box of box times by d box by dx, okay? Now, that looks a little bit weird, okay? Because um, what you're usually used to is, uh, I think, dy by dx equals, um, what was it? dy by du times by du by dx. You're probably used to the chain rule in this form, all right? But we're going to think of the chain rule in the form I've just given it in terms of the boxes here, okay? So the chain rule. I can kind of get the idea, can't you, that if I take a highlighter, um, the D box by D box cancels each other out. Can you see that? And then look at the left-hand side. The left-hand side now, D by DX of box, D by DX of box. Okay, so there's a little bit of trivialization, but uh, I'm just trying to get it in terms of a visual. All right, so let's go to the actual examples below us. So D by DX of Y cubed. Okay, so basically, that's d by dy of y cubed times by dy by dx, all right? d by dx of w squared, well, that's d by dw of w squared times dw by dx. d by dx of ln y is d by dy of ln y. So let's go ahead and differentiate ln y with respect to the variable y but then you've got to times it by dy by dx. And the final one here, uh, let me just change this variable at the bottom so it's not a y. Let's put that in as a z, okay? So that would be d by dz of z, but times by dz by dx, okay? So that kind of makes sense, doesn't it? Um, now, of course, if we wanted the answers here, then what we'd do is we'd actually just replace the derivatives. So the derivatives are are here. So we'd just replace this with 3y squared, but then that'd be 3y squared times by dy by dx. This would be 2w times by dw by dx. This would be 1 over y times by dy by dx. And this last one would be interesting. Um, d by dx of z equals, well, this would be 1 times dz by dx. Okay. Now that, that's quite an interesting little final result because if I just get rid of this thing now again and if I just wrote, getting onto some kind of expression here, if I wrote z equals to, I don't know, x cubed plus 1, okay, if I said differentiate this with respect to x, you just do this one, you just do dz by dx and then you'd have that as 3x squared. Okay, and you just get rid of this guy here, okay? Um, but actually, technically what we're doing is we're differentiating both sides with respect to x. Okay, so let me just take, show you that with, uh, with this one here. Um, maybe before this one, let's just go to this guy here. y is equal to um, 3x to the 4, okay? So with all that work before, if I differentiate both sides with respect to x, okay? The right hand side we can differentiate straight away because it's in terms of x so that's 12 x to the 3 and the left hand side well what do we do we differentiate 
d by dy, we go and differentiate the y respect to y, but then we times by dy by dx. And look what happens. d by dy of y is 1, so it's 1 times by dy by dx is equal to 12x to the 4. So that just means dy by dx equals to 12x to the 4. Now we never go to that length, do we? Because if we're given something like y equals 3x to the 4, we just go straight away, don't we? We just say dy by dx equals 12x cubed. But that step from here to here actually is wrapped up in implicit differentiation. But the implicit differentiation is very, very simple. Um, yeah, y just becomes dy by dx, okay? So that's, that's the key to actually doing implicit differentiation. So now if I take this uh, top question here, uh, let me just erase this here. Okay, so we're going to find this here, and the question is find dy by dx. Okay, find dy by dx. So it's a relationship between rates of change of y and x. Now, okay, one way is to arrange it exclusively y equals and some kind of function of x. Okay, and then this left hand side will just turn automatically into dy by dx, and this right hand side will be kind of some other function of x. Okay, so that's one way you rearrange to make y the subject. And, and you can here because this you could rearrange as a quadratic in y and use complete the square. So you can rearrange this to make y equals, um, but it's easier if we use that implicit differentiation. So let's just erase this. And let's just put in the guidance. So we're going to differentiate both sides with respect to x, because eventually we want d by dx. So differentiate the left-hand side with respect to x, and differentiate the right-hand side with respect to x. Okay. So now the left-hand side, d by dx of y squared, go ahead and differentiate with respect to y first, and then times by dy by dx. Okay. So this left-hand side. If I keep going down, that's 2y times by dy by dx. And usually I jump from this first stage to, to this first line to the third line. d by dx of y squared is differentiate y squared with respect to y, 2y, and then times by dy by dx. Then the left hand side, we can split it up, of course, can't we? d by dx of 3x squared plus d by dx of 2y. Okay, put that in brackets. And now look, d by dx of 3x squared, 6x, because it's in terms of x and d by dx of 2y, different variables. So go ahead and differentiate 2y with respect to y. That gives you 2, but then times by dy by dx, okay? Now the last stage is just a case of simple, just simple rearrangement, okay? So let's uh, let's maybe divide through by 2, 2 here, 3 here, okay? And then let's have dy by dx here. And I'll, I'll bring the dy by dx over, and therefore I think I've got y minus 1, does that make sense? And that equals to 3. So therefore, dy by dx equals to 3 over y minus 1. And you can, you can leave it like that, because maybe you're going to go on and try and find the gradient on this initial function at a particular xy coordinate. Uh, and in terms of this last answer, we just actually only need, don't we, the y coordinate to better find a gradient on this particular relation or function or whatever it is. Okay, you can obviously replace y here. You can replace that, can't you? With, well, how how would you replace it? Because to replace that, to get it all in terms of x, you'd have to rearrange this guy here and make it in terms of y. And if we'd have done that in the first place, then why didn't we just do the normal differentiation? So usually the implicit, your final answer, the implicit differentiation, this one here, it could be in terms of x and y, or exclusively in one or the other. And, and usually we don't need to rewrite it in any other form than just dy by dx. Okay. So finally we get to the question that you've asked. All right, we're going to do it both ways. So for this one here, we are going to differentiate both sides with respect to x on this page. And on this side, we're going to differentiate both sides with respect to y. So it's d by dy. Differentiate with respect to y, okay? So on this side, I mean, quite correctly, your first move was to take the natural log of both sides, which makes sense. So this is x times by ln x, and this is ln y, okay? But now, oh, let me just change the colour there, I think. Let me just keep this in black. So x times ln x equals to ln y, so just using logarithms. And now, let's just feed in, we're going to differentiate both sides, d by dx of the left-hand side, and that has to match d by dx of 
the right hand side okay so d by dx of x ln x this is just um, everything's in the right variable isn't it so this is just a product rule which i think you got on your picture uh, ragu so uh, d by dx of x log x leave the first differentiate the second plus leave the second differentiate the first that's the left hand side now the right hand side d by dx of ln y okay so we're, we're differentiating ln y with respect to x so go ahead and differentiate ln y the thing in the brackets with respect to that variable so ln y becomes 1 over y that you must times by dy by dx okay so this should help you a lot so this is 1 plus ln x and that equals to 1 over y times by dy by dx so you can clearly see that dy by dx equals to y into 1 plus ln x and you can leave it like that but because we have y is x to the x we can write it like this which is quite nice okay so there's dy by dx so when we've talked through this given this relationship between x and y we could graph it and then this would express the gradient on any point on that original function given a certain x value okay now let's try and see we get the same result by looking at it from a different perspective differentiate both sides with respect to y all right so um, let me go back to black pen, so um, x times ln x equals to ln y, uh, so that's taking the logarithms of both sides, but now let's differentiate both sides, so differentiate both sides with respect to y, it becomes a bit trickier, but we can do it, okay, alright then, so d by dy on the right hand side, that, that's easy enough isn't it, that's just 1 over y, but now d by dy of the um, left hand side, Oof, well that's pretty tricky isn't it but what we have to do is d by dx of x ln x go ahead and differentiate with respect to x anyway and then times by dy by dx okay and then we're just going to transfer across you know d by dx of x ln x wasn't that just one because it was leave the first times differentiate the second plus leave the second differentiate the first i think it was that from before wasn't it yeah one plus ln x and now times it by dy by dx and on the right hand side that is literally just 1 over y okay so you're kind of getting a similar answer here aren't you but you're not uh, d by dy ah. so can you see what the mistake I made here Okay, so you should have spotted the mistake that I made here because this last answer here does not correspond to this answer on the left here. Okay, and it's because the notation here isn't quite right. Okay, so let me just take it back and just explain the mistake I made here on this left hand side d by dy of x ln x. Okay, go on d by dx it, but then can you see that the mistake I've made is clearly here? Can you see I need to end up with d by dy but can you see that I've got these guys the wrong way around so the mistake that is going to be a common one that <laughs> I make for sure and that most students will definitely make is here at this particular stage you times this by dx by dy okay so d by dy is d by dx times by dx by dy so that's a clear error in terms of processing and it's going to be a common one that we'll make. Can you see that? Okay. So now that we can see it, we can actually then rearrange to give this y is 1 plus ln x. And that's equal to 1 over dx by dy. And 1 over dx by dy is indeed dy by dx. That's equal to y into 1 plus ln x. Okay. So that, that's a, that's a, a quick summary-ish of implicit differentiation using the notation correctly. I'm just thinking that if I've got some kind of equation, I, I do the same thing to both sides. So differentiate both sides with respect to x, or I differentiate both sides with respect to y. Um, I usually differentiate both sides with respect to x. I usually do this method here. Uh, you can see why, why, because when you differentiate both sides with respect to y, things kind of switch around. And remember we made, well, I made that mistake just there. Uh, it's a common one to do. Okay, hope that helps.